What's up everyone, Nat here. This video has been a while in the making, but I'm gonna try and outline our organization, outliers in one video in terms of what we do, who we work with, how we do it, results we can expect and all that jazz. So if you've been following along and you've kind of had some questions, I'll try and cover all of it, but if not, shoot me a message and you know, you know what to do. So, Outliers is an interdisciplinary development company. What that means is that we like to take all of the best teachings and learnings from anywhere we can get them and make them applicable, useful, and take out all the jargon and make them understandable for someone to execute and use. The science part of that is going to look for it and the art is how to make it all work. But there is a certain type of person that we exist for. The best place to start would be who we're best suited for, because then the kind of rest makes sense. So we're going to go through kind of what the conditions this person is in, and then what it kind of feels like to be them. And then you can just cross-reference to see how much or how little you kind of fit with that. So typically, I'll start like this. The person I work the best with and we work the best with is someone who is very, very street smart, and they've used their street smarts to get them to their point of success. They kind of battle between staying where they are because they're already quite a, kind of successful and established, let's just say an established personality. But there's this battle between do I go for it again or do I kind of rest in this kind of socially acceptable point of success? The third point is, is they typically hold the most responsibility in the room. That comes with a bit of complexity management. So typically a part of the condition of an outlier, the client I work the best with, is that They've got so much complexity that they can't typically delegate it, not out of can't, but out of no one else has the whole picture. Think about it, right? If you've developed your success through street smarts, it's very hard to teach. And so you hold this whole picture that's very, very hard to just kind of delegate things to other people because it's your mind, it's your street smarts that kind of got you there. They know they need someone in their life. A psych doesn't feel right or fit Normal market coach, it probably seems a bit too general. And then they just don't have time for courses and online stuff and, and you know, so that's where I come in. What I call is the 95-5 rule. My client appreciates that 95% of their world, they are all over the top of, and they're happy to share it with anyone. And there's just that 5% left over that they kind of keep private and kind of work through themselves. And they don't know who to give that to. That normally comes to me. The outlier pretty much has what they want, um, but there is some slight things kind of left over that just feel a little bit untouched or unsatisfied. They've done so well that the last bit's kind of the hardest to get their handle on. So that's the kind of conditions. What it would feel like for this person is typically like this. So it feels like they go between bouts of really deep focus and then wanting to withdraw. They go, they have typically feel a, a kind of wobbly or loose core identity. And that's because they wear many hats, many, many hats. This can translate into kind of normally struggling with relationship expectations. And that is intimate relationships, friendships, that whole world is, it can be tricky. This is having just multiple projects on the go at once. Typically it feels like they aren't allowed to complain because everything normally goes quite well and success is kind of built into them. It's kind of part of their life. If they put their mind to it, and if this is you, if you put your mind to something, um, then it normally works. That can set up this bit of a strange kind of um, guilt feeling of, of, well, I shouldn't be asking for help or complaining or, or trying to work some stuff out because I've got everything that I want. Back to the 95-5. You will have 95% of it worked out and that last 5% is where, is where we come in. And we're typically, well, we're very skilled at that last 5%. Our kind of advantage is it's the how we do what we do, which gives us the uh, gives outliers the advantage in the market. It's really simply, we do four primary things that typically you'll have to go for go to different places to get. The first one is we just call grow up, which is the movement forward towards meaning. Typically, the outliers have a very very full life, but it is missing some kind of really grounded sense of meaning. The next one is, uh, is we go through emotional and psychological relief. Now this is a little different therapy and the reason why it's different is because when you have a street smart, high complexity person, they build up toxicities 
and they build up toxicities just because of their lifestyle and the way they like to live. So I, can, I come in, my team can come in and we can smooth all that down with emotional and psychological relief. So that's the second thing we do. The third thing we do, which is a little bit of our calling card, is we usher in some wisdom from the East and we really get our clients to appreciate existence. Appreciate and learn the techniques of becoming free um, through appreciating the fact that it's really nice and wholesome to study the fact that we exist. Typically we're caught in function. What do we do, what do we do, what do we do? We don't really ask, what are we, what are we, what are we? And they can complement each other in a really, really tight, comprehensive way. And the last thing, which is my favorite, is we optimize psychology and potentials. Not potential as in new age potential, potentials. Everyone has potentials in them uh, that when situated correctly, in the right conditions, massaged enough, ex uh, explored enough, they tend to come to the surface. Now, what, are the, what is the result of all this? Well, that's a tricky one because that takes a conversation to understand what the individual, uh, how they want to put this all together. So I don't, I'm not big on going, this is what we can get you because we don't know you yet. That, that sort of depends on you. Although we kind of need you to help us out with where we're going and the results that you want, I'll just share a few kind of standardized results that we see pretty much in every client. And then you can see whether that's kind of what you want or, or you want something different. But the first thing we see is this kind of like renewal of energy like when you first started your endeavor or your craft or your business that kind of excitement comes back everything starts to feel fresh again there's certainly a a gaining back of something that was lost that's typically the first thing that happens quite quick you know normally within the first week or two the second thing is that there's this relief from aspects of the self that this outlier and if this is you haven't really been able to get your own hand on just yet and that, that normally has partly to do with the letting go of the fear that if you don't keep going, 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 the whole show is going to blow up, you know, which is, which we move through that, we move through those two pretty quickly. The third thing we see is there's a general excitement and for life comes back, a general excitement for the adventure for life comes back. And it's not just about the next project or the next business or the next deal or whatever. There's a generalized excitement for the adventure comes back. On the other side, there is a, there's a sense of resolve. So there's a higher resolve. What I call psychological unity just means that more parts of this personality is working together. There's a unification happening. And when that happens, more challenge can be taken on. And when more challenge can be taken on in a unified way, it's more enjoyable. Psychological unity, higher resolve, more challenge, more enjoyment in the challenge. Then we're getting to something along the lines of there's a ability to stop and let it all sink in. <laughs> there's a point along the path when I'm working somewhere where they just stop, they feel their success that they have, they enjoy their success, they use their money how they want to use it um, without feeling that old school guilt, you know, because think about it, street smart person, got to be good with cash, they get to a stage where they can use it but then they clamp down on it, that all goes away, which is great. Typically the last one that we see is this kind of, there's a re-engagement in the process, but it's through a genuine interest. It comes from this place of, I'm so interested in it, my heart and soul is so in it, that is, it's a reinvigorating again, and typically the results just get better from that place anyway. So there's some of the things you just see quite often. That is a brief outline of what we do, who we best do it with, uh, how we do what we do in our kind of major categories and then we go, we get to work down, down that channel. So have a think about that. If that is something that you've, the answers some questions you've been asking about what we do and who we do it with, the who's probably the most important thing is it clicks typically to make it easy is the more responsibility, the more complexity you have, uh, then the better we will work together because there's other people that can do a whole bunch of other stuff as well. So have a think about that. Take it easy, guys. And if you have questions uh, or want to engage with us, then fire away. Shoot me a message um, and we'll get started. Bye-bye.